Welcome back to Side Room Hanger. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today I want to talk to you about troop building, army building, and is it good? Is it bad? Is there anything wrong with it? Is it hoarding? You know, a lot of people like to make negative comments about army building and troop building, and yes, it does sort of cause some issues. And I've spoken about this before. I am guilty of it. If you're, if it's really a guilty thing. A guilty pleasure, that is. But I've kind of found what I like about it. My my optimal number that makes me feel like troop building has been achieved, but it's not going too far overboard. And yeah, some people do go overboard, but we'll talk about this and more coming up. First off, why do people want to troop build. Why is this even a thing? Why is it even a topic, an issue, something we talk about? In military toy lines, there's armies. You've got to have armies. And to just have one Cobra trooper doesn't really feel like you have an army. To have several feels more right. Whether it's G.I. Joe or Star Wars, it really is part of the media. The media drives it because you see armies of stormtroopers, you see armies of cobra troopers, you see armies of bats. A lot of collectors collect and display and they want to match the media. They want to match it up to the media. It's hard in some of these cases, but it's actually quite impressive in others. It's actually possible to be hard and impressive at the same time, but Cool looking displays require quite a bit of troop building in a military toy line. And I've seen some even more impressive pictures in the past. Wish I would have held on to those. And certain companies know that a troop builder is going to pay dividends. You make one mold and you can just keep remaking that figure over and over and over and print money with it. Because troop builders and people want to build displays with multiple troops but where the problem really comes in is when companies don't plan for it and you don't have the availability we're gonna be talking about vintage and modern here so i've counted fingers and toes this is my 18th time complaining about the viper from target cobra island but this is not so much of a complaint anymore i did buy my friend's collection a few years back for a thousand he had six Vipers, then I sold off most of the rest of the stuff I didn't want or need, almost broke even, so I'm kind of happy to have my six Vipers now. But this thing was almost impossible to find. I still have only seen one in a secondhand shop for 90. I've never seen one in the store before, ever. And yes, we had a June, whatever. There was some sort of event. My wife actually was there, the 30 seconds is available and got me one, but I have to say that this was hard to get. Now you can get a Viper 3 pack. It's not the same. It's not as good. It's a troop builder pack. And it didn't sell very well. People still want this. And they want 20 or 30 of them. But this was a problem. But it's not just this figure as a problem. Even the troopers behind it are kind of hard to get. Which is really nice. Now they're putting out the vintage collection. A retro one. So it took a few years. Now we get this retro Cobra Trooper. It still doesn't match the original aesthetic that some people might want. I kind of like the way this looks even better. But with that, one of the problems is availability. A lot of people get mad if they see other people troop build, but they can't find them themselves. Not even one themselves. Now, I never actually got upset about that. I got upset about the fact that I just couldn't find one. I was there, it's time to order, and I wasn't allowed to order it. And uh, people are gonna say, well, it's because other collectors were buying 20 at a time or 60. Some people bought 60 and you're sitting over here not able to get one. I understand the frustration behind that, but that is truly where the problem lies, is the inavailability to other people, and they get upset about it. Some people say that time heals all wounds. Well, with this one, the prices have come down drastically, but still 40 bucks for one G.I. Joe classified figure. Still a lot of money, but it's not, that's not like 90 or 150 or whatever they were asking back in the day, but it's more reasonable now, still pretty expensive, but this is why people are upset. 
having to resort to the secondary market, not be able to buy it from the store or the actual distributor and not able to get it for the retail price is upsetting. And that in a nutshell is truly the only reason people are upset about troop building. Is troop building or army building hoarding? Well, the simple answer to that is yes. Yes, you're hoarding a whole bunch of stuff. But could you have 11,000 action figures but not any duplicates and consider that hoarding also? Yep. People collect how they collect. I collect how I collect. You collect how you want. I'm never going to get upset about somebody else hoarding 1,000 stormtroopers. That could bother me, especially clone troopers. No. I don't collect the clone troopers so much, so it doesn't bother me all that much. But even stormtroopers or having five or six or 20 or 100 stormtroopers, clone troopers, doesn't bother me either. And I'm actually quite impressed by that. Especially when you find stuff on clearance. Now, I never really hear people complaining about somebody buying out all the clearance. Because, in my opinion, that stuff has sat on shelves for years now. Some of the stuff's still from 2021. And if somebody's going to buy up the clearance, that's going to free up a skew for other stuff to come in and say, hey, we've cleared out so much of this product, even though it was clearanced. The, the computer doesn't really care about that. It compares about, cares about quantities on hand. But this one here in the vintage collection was marked down to like three bucks in one of the Walmart. So I bought up several. And this is a fun troop builder figure. But with that, I don't hear a lot of people ever complain about clearance. I would think that it would be kind of funny that, well, it sat on the shelf for three years. You didn't buy it. Now that somebody else bought it on clearance, you're mad about it? Even though I don't hear the complaints, I know there are people out there that do complain about somebody buying everything that's on clearance. If there's 20 of these on clearance, somebody buys them all, well, I didn't get a chance to buy one for $3. Well, then you should check the clearance aisle every day. Let's look at some of this stuff from a vintage standpoint here. And I went through a lot of trouble to amass a handful of these bats, but then I started seeing this is kind of what happened. I think I bought a few at the height of the hype. And then as time went by, I started seeing them show up cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Then I bought the first ones, So I picked up more and more and more and ended up, I didn't really want to set out to true build. I said, hey, I'd like to have a handful of them. But as I saw, it was a pretty decent one that was a little nicer than the one I bought. And it's cheaper. And I fell down that rabbit hole. I cold stopped on that rabbit hole, by the way. Also, I like troop building some of the Super 7s. Now, the Ultimates, they're expensive. But I got excitement for possibility of having Deluxe. The $35 ones will be easier to troop build. But no, I did not get these bats for $10 or $11 each from Entertainment Earth. That one morning they were on sale. I completely missed that in the morning. And who knows what's going to happen with troopers going forward. Will they go on sale? But I kind of feel like the optimal number is three. And I'm looking at this. And I really feel like I got five bats in here, which you, you probably can't even see all of them. But five bats in here. And I don't feel like they do any more for the display than the three Cobra Troopers do. But other people would disagree with me. I still think three is my magic number for troop building going forward. And so with that, I'm probably just going to stop at three and not try to go any further. I'm not going to troop build everything. And if I already have stuff that is, let's say I've got five or in some cases eight, 12, then I guess I'm done. I stop at that number. I'm pretty happy with my troop of 12 if I have 12 or five. But I think going forward, if I'm going to troop build something, I think three is a magic number because it looks like a nice little army. It looks good enough and it's not going to occupy too much of my space, but it's still going to feel like you have a nice little cluster of figures and an army display and a military display and a troop building display. Now there's another uh, YouTuber who's pretty new. He's been making his videos about vintage G.I. Joe and he's big, big, big into the... Python Patrol stuff. His, he goes by G.I. Joes and Beards, but he did say recently that he's been getting a lot of uh, negativity about his troop building of Python Patrol, which that's his sort of focus uh, to, to troop build Python Patrol. And it's a free market economy. He can do whatever he wants. So there's he's not breaking any rules. He's not doing anything wrong. And I'm impressed with his display here. And I'm somebody that still doesn't have 
one of every Python Patrol figure yet, let alone a complete one of each. I, I haven't really gone after it that hard. And with that, I, I probably would like to complete it, get one of each. But what he does is show on his channel that, hey, I got this for 20 bucks, like uh, 20 or less. And here's six more Python Patrols. I got all of them for a good reasonable price, 20 or less. And they're all in pretty good condition. And so that kind of gives hope to people. I would think that someone like that would give hope to people and not make people want to bash him. But hey, whatever. And the other thing is the addition of dioramas. I, th I think we're seeing a lot of companies putting out play sets or not even play sets. They call them play sets, but they're really just dioramas. And with that, you can get some really good looking scenes together and you will need to have some troop building going on to make it accurate to the media. And we're seeing more and more, especially with Star Wars. So the Star Wars team seems to be putting out a lot of dioramas and those dioramas are going to require some troop building. And this is a great way to do it. This, I think this one was set up at a Star Wars celebration, but this isn't one they're making, but it's still something that shows there's a bunch of these officers and or whoever the men in black down there that build it up and yeah multiple officers but it's a great looking display that matches it almost exactly to the scene i haven't even gotten into mint and package collectors that troop build in the package they're not going to be making dioramas out of it but they just want to have 20 of the same figure in the package for whatever reason now i don't understand it and that's the thing I don't understand it and I'm not going to bash it because I don't understand it. But also at the same time, you like what you like and you collect how you collect. Because you know, there's some people out there that might troop build Funko Pops for all I know. I wouldn't get that either. So feel free to chime in on this topic. What do you guys think about troop building, army building? Do you think it's crazy, ridiculous, over the top? Are you impressed with the dioramas that people can make and what has been accomplished due to army building and troop building in all of these toy lines. But let me know in the comments below, like, subscribe, and Tidarium Hangar out.